have a an election that was interfered with by the Russians. So whether there was some type of collusion, whether there was a cover-up. He has no evidence that Comey asked for any further resources, that all the resources were there. The entire thing has been a witch hunt, and uh, there is no collusion between certainly myself and my campaign. But I can always speak for myself and the Russians, zero. This week alone, I've probably uh, been on the phone with or hosted here in Washington a nine or 11 foreign uh, counterparts or spoken with uh, Secretary General on the phone and all. Uh, the issue has never come up. And as President Trump boarded Air Force One en route to Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, the steady stream of leaks and allegations trailed him like exhaust fumes from the plane itself. I just fired the head of the FBI, the New York Times quotes the president as having told a Russian delegation, he was crazy, a real nut job. I faced great pressure because of Russia. That's taken off. I'm not under investigation. The Times added, the White House document that contained Mr. Trump's comments was based on notes taken from inside the Oval Office and has been circulated as the official account of the meeting. One official read quotations to the Times. Then there's the Washington Post, which reports the law enforcement investigation into possible coordination between Russia and the Trump campaign has identified a current White House official as a significant person of interest, showing that the probe is reaching into the highest levels of government, according to people familiar with the matter. The senior White House advisor under scrutiny by investigators is someone close to the president, according to these people. Let's break it all down with the panel. Lisa Booth, columnist with the Washington Examiner. A.B. Stoddard, associate editor at Real Clear Politics. And syndicated columnist Charles Krauthammer, uh, unindicted co-conspirators all. Um, <laughs> Lisa, this Washington Post story about a senior advisor close to the president, which seems like language calculated to make us think of Jared Kushner. Uh, if this is true, it's putting aside if it's Kushner or not, but if it's true that there is such a person in the White House who is now a person of interest for this investigation, should the Trump White House regard that as a significant escalation in this story? Uh, I, I mean, potentially, but I think everyone should just take what is printed with a grain of salt. We've seen a lot of this information that has surfaced uh, been incorrect. If you remember, even in regarding to the, the New York Times article uh, with President Trump's conversations with the Russians, we've seen, uh, you know, there was a report that with the, uh, speaking to the Mexico president, that there was a threat from President Trump. Uh, the spokesperson for the president came out and said that was not true. Same thing with the Australian prime minister. There's reports that he hung up on him. Uh, he said that was not true. We've seen reports regarding Comey be incorrect as well. So I think that uh, everything should sort of be taken with a grain of salt these days. Uh, okay, uh, let's listen to or just hear from the White House Press Secretary, Sean Spicer, who assuredly has had better weeks than this one. He offered a pair of rebuttals to these stories. On the Times story about what the president told the Russians, Spicer said, uh, and I quote, by grandstanding and politicizing the investigation into Russia's actions, James Comey created unnecessary pressure on our ability to engage and negotiate with Russia. The investigation would have always continued, and obviously the termination of Comey would not have ended it. Once again, Spicer said the real story is that our national security has been undermined by the leaking of private and highly classified conversations. A.B., uh, here we have notes taken inside the Oval Office, and they said an American official, meaning a current official, sitting on the phone and reading those quotes from this official document uh, chronicling this meeting with the Russians to a Times reporter. That doesn't bother you? No, oh, I, I feel, <laughs> I feel uh, accused, James. Okay, my apologies. Um, that, was not a, my story. that was a tendentious it's the New York lead Times. You're, but, you're quite um, right. But should we not be bothered by the leaking? Address, if you would, Sean Spicer's comment that the leaking is the most salient feature of this. Well, the leaking is a problem. The, leak, the leaks were a problem for President Obama. As you well know, James, um, they, they, they are going to be... Um, under, uh, I think they're really facing um, a, a great fear that the, of the leaks because of the rate at which they've faced leaks and the rate at which they seem to come now at a, even sort of a more rapid speed regarding this investigation. I think it's you know it's it's, it's it is going to um, cause them great stress and it is obviously a huge part of the story. Much of this is not legal, um, but people are doing it. Um, because they believe the president's doing something wrong.
and the the potency of these reports and these accounts are going to cause him great political peril even if in the end let's say from the Washington Post story the person of interest is not a target um, will not be charged with anything you know criminal or anything it it creates another dramatic uh, storyline about the Trump uh, West Wing and the way that Trump behaves um, uh, about the Russia investigation how he fired Comey why he fired Comey and the way that he talks with Russian officials when he thinks no one's listening. So I, I always come back to everything is through the prism of Congress for me. Um, this puts an enormous amount of pressure on people who've had a tough week in his party um, to try to keep saying, uh, you'll just have to talk to Bob Mueller, the special counsel. These are really, really tough stories to try to come around and defend. I will not lead into you with a, with a negative construction <laughs> like that again. You were, you, were, you were quite right to I mean, object. you silence me, Jane. Uh, on the Post story about about the Russia probe potentially ensnaring a current White House official, Sean Spicer said, and I quote, uh, as the president has stated before, a thorough investigation will confirm that there was no collusion between the campaign and any foreign entity. Uh, on this panel just a few days ago, Charles, you called this a scandal in search of a crime. Uh, are you still, conv uh, do you still hold that position? Does the Post story uh, uh, asserting that there's somebody very high up in the White House right now who's now a, a person of interest in the investigation, does that, are you disturbed by that? Well, are you accusing me too here? <laughs> no, I'm not disturbed by it at all. A person of interest means somebody who knows. It doesn't mean somebody who did something wrong or illegal. Uh, I think on here they are protesting uh, too much. And Spicer's protest, that the real issue here is particularly with the Russian thing, uh, the Russian, uh, the Trump talking to the Russians about the Mueller firing, that this is an issue of the leak, uh, is inadvertently self-indicting because after all the idea that re that journalists are going to receive leaks is is um, it's a constant you the journalists are always ready to pick up the phone if he's saying we have a real problem here with leaks what we're talking about what's unusual is the Niagara of leaks coming out of this White House as you said this had to have been somebody in the room somebody who took the notes, somebody who called the Times, picked up the phone and read the notes. So the problem here is an inner circle of people to be who have lost faith or are betraying or whatever. But it's certainly not a leak problem that ought to interest us. It's a loyalty problem inside the White House. To be clear, the four American officials who were in the Oval Office for that meeting with the Russian delegation were the President, the Secretary of State, uh, the White House National Security Advisor, uh, and his deputy, Dina Powell. And somebody who had access to yeah, the notes. The and notes, that they took the notes, but the notes were then put into paper form for a chronicle of the meeting, and, and more people will have access to that, that's and that's right. one of the leakers here, correct? But those people are inside the White House, in other words. This is not NSA, FBI, enemies in the deep state trying to undermine the president because he's an outsider. This is inside people. And what Spicer is saying, that's the real story? Well, if that's the real story, it's the administration, the White House's problem. All right, we've just gotten a bit of breaking news. and.